these guys are my friends, um, and I don't want to ruin that. Um, <laughs> uh, but it is dangerous uh, for me to say some of the things I'm going to say um, because the professional relationship between a reporter and the source is a very precious relationship. And if I'm going to be straight with you all, I'm going to say some things that are going to put me in a compromised position with, with him and with Jim. Um, the reason why I'm able to do what I do is because I've beaten the hell out of bad guys. And everybody else who is on the margins of the bad guy world is scared to death that I would do the same thing to them. Um, and that even includes good guys who are afraid of getting pushed into the bad guy column. So my most important partner in the work I do as an advocate is the guys at the opposite ends of this table. I can't go to a, a, a bank president and um, say to him or her that if you don't open a branch in the poor neighborhoods uh, or downtowns of downtown in Bethlehem, the next time you apply for regulatory approval to open a branch in the rich white suburbs, I'm going to beat the hell out of you. I'll hold a press conference. I'll formally oppose your branch application in the suburbs. And even if the regulators approve your branch in the rich white suburbs, we'll do so much damage to your public relations image that you'll be spending money for years cleaning up after it. If I don't have tough reporters who take that news and treat it as news, I've got nothing. So all of the bad guys out there are going to be on the loose if newspapers fail. So as much as it's good to hear Tim say that the industry isn't as much danger as the the title might suggest, um, it, it is different than it used to be. It's, it's different. Um, there are more sensitivities to offending people, and there are fewer reporters. Uh, all you need is a fire on the day of that press conference, and the press conference doesn't get covered if you don't have enough reporters. Um, so I think it's important to understand that. Now, one of the counterbalances to this whole thing is sitting right there, and that's Bernie O'Hare, who's got a blog, uh, easily the most popular blog in the region. Everybody I know looks at it every day, even though a lot of people don't want to admit it. But <laughs> Bernie O'Hare has to pay his bills with a real job. So Bernie can't be out covering everything, he certainly can't do it by himself, and he certainly can't do the investigative stuff. Some of the things that I've pulled off in the Lehigh Valley is because I've gone to a reporter <coughs> and said, Psst, have I got a story for you? And the research that I couldn't do because I don't have the staff support to do it, that reporter, if I can convince him I've got a real issue here and a real story, goes out and does the heavy lifting for me. So the threat of, of, uh, to the democracy the threat to civil society is very real. And as much as it's great to have the blog world out there playing that counterbalancing role, I, I don't know, Bernie, if you're going to give up your day job anytime soon to be a full-time blogger, but there's still only one of you. Um, so, uh, okay, let me just make one last point, and that is that the content in a newspaper is far greater than it is on television. Um, an in-depth story on television news is going to get you two minutes. Um, and I, you even learn to speak to a television reporter differently than you talk to a, a newspaper reporter. You talk to a television reporter in sentences, maybe even phrases. You can talk to a reporter in paragraphs and even pages and chapters. Um, so the, the demise of newspapers, uh, even the cutting back, absolutely vital uh, to our ability to take on the bad guys, and the bad guys make too much money to go away without somebody calling them a bad guy and exposing them for their, for their behavior. Thank you. Tim?